This is Lemons Car Spotting. You post to Instagram with the hashtag Lemons Car Spotting. We pick the hooptiest. They are so incredibly terrible. And which one we want to become a real Lemons build. It does car-like things. I've been pushing for one of those in Lemons too, and those are very affordable. Hey, welcome to Lemons Car Spotting. It is Eric. It is Jay. We are going to talk about the cars that you post on Instagram with the hashtag Lemons Car Spotting. It's pretty simple. You're out and about in the world. You take a photo of a really crappy, interesting, weird, unidentifiable car. You tag it with Lemons Car Spotting. We talk about it on our YouTube channel, and that's pretty much it. Eric, so, Eric I just what is it again that they get out of this? I don't know. They're other doing than, all the work. Uh, well, we don't even leave the house. I love, I love when you undermine your own company, Jay. It's <laughs> one of my favorite things about all I do. <laughs> pretty, pretty much all I do. Pretty much all well, I do. It, it validates Ignore the last thirty seconds, people. Yeah, I didn't say fine. anything. We'll kill it in post. Um, <laughs> we don't have posts. We don't have that. Yeah. <laughs> we well, don't I mean, have it, money on post. Once, once you've started doing lemons, you can't help but see crappy cars. Like, it's yeah. just a thing. So this kind of validates that there are other people with the same affliction. This is really like a therapy session, if we're going to be honest about it. I was just going to say, it's almost like when I take the picture and post the picture, it frees up space in my brain. And I, it's like, okay, that's out there for other people. Now I don't have to think about the car that's going to be popping up next, which we'll be shortly talking about. Yes. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So when we do this, we do about 10 cars and each one of us will get to pick the car that we think is hooptiest, which is going to be represented by my right hand, which will make sense in a second. And the car we would most want to see in lemons on the left hand. And Jay will pick whichever one it lands on as I do our secret picking trick. Go Jay. Now. Right hand, you are going to pick the hooptiest. Okay. All right. So, without further ado, let us take a look at this first crap can. I don't know that I can even call it a crap can. That's European great. Ultimanta, it's cheating because it's in Europe. Right. It's a little bit like a Cavalier picture in America. Oh, wait a minute. We like those too. So, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. These were rear wheel drive, right? Yeah. 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 These, I've never driven one of these. I mean, it looks kind of great. It's like a Pontiac Aster nose on a Cavalier generic J body center section with a T table wing. I mean, very, it's mysterious that Opal like wound up having to get spun off. Cause look at the, look at what they're making. Uh, it, the body kit sells it, you know, because I, what, what I think that's factory. Doesn't right. it look, yeah, that's like the works body kit on the Opal Manta. In fact, yeah. Is that that decoration on the side? Oh yeah, that's like a that's like a, a, a stencil. Yeah, they probably yeah. did that literally with cardboard and spray paint. Yeah, like we do with yeah, the bribe exactly. stencils. Yeah, exactly. The Rosalsheim version. It's funny yeah. it, around the Midwest you'll see the roundy roundy boy Cavaliers with the body kits, which is kind of like this, except for every little corner of the fiberglass is smashed off of it from hitting curbs and potholes. So <laughs> to see a clean Manta, you know, tells you a yeah. lot about Germany's infrastructure. It's actually yeah. parked on the sidewalk also. <laughs> I just know which in Germany will get you thrown in prison for a while. So. I think so. Yeah. yeah this is what better. constitutes a German hot rotting culture outlaw society. Wonder what that would be like to drive. I've never driven that. It's, Probably, but terrible because it's GM. Maybe awesome. It probably is like driving a refined Chevette, if yeah. I was going to bet. My yeah. experience of all Opals, and I think Philip's experience with the bitter will confirm this. My experience of all Opals is that they drive kind of like the car they're aspiring to be, but with a lot less power and a, and a kind of a lazier motor and big gaps everywhere. Yeah. Sounds to right. be fair, they're one third the price of the Mercedes that they're trying to be. So, right, right, yeah. All right, next up, I don't know, it's a pickup truck. Like, uh, is that a, what is it? Is it a Comanche? No, I think it's like a Montero. Ah, uh, 
Yeah, that would make or you know whatever mm. whatever that Mitsu or a Suzu. It's one of those fourth tier Japanese. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. I like it. I have no idea. Somebody somebody will post uh, in the comments what the hell that thing is. Moving on. Yep. There we go. There we go. Is that a charade? No, it's smaller than the charade. Whatever the Daihatsu is. Or is it yeah. a Honda? No, I think it's a Daihatsu. But I don't know. I don't know. The important thing here is actually not the car, but the wheels. That's pretty spectacular. I mean, I think those are like 13s. This is the problem with Lemon's car spotting is it shows how little we actually know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Pretty good though. Uh, Pretty good. I like that it's you know got the tape stripes. It's got mm -hmm. tape stripes and the hood scoop for the tiny turbo on the 654 cc yeah. engine that yeah. the K cars all had. I'm 994 percent that that's a Honda. It's a something or other, which means it's probably a Daihatsu. Tell us in the comments, by the way. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Probably all right, nice. now, now we're getting somewhere. So this. This is a first-gen Honda Insight spotted by my brother Robert in Mountain View, where he works, that some genius, because the Honda Insight was not efficient enough, some genius made it into a three-wheeler with a tapered cam back, maybe fiberglass, maybe aluminum, like in pop rivets covered in Bondo, we don't know. I'm assuming that this has like a Honda 550 twin motor something like that can't really see it in this picture but motorcycle wheel no back window can't park it probably can't steer i'm sure though that he's gone from 45 miles to the gallon to 62 miles to the gallon and this guy is loving life he's the smartest man in the world that's right it, this is beating the system in in the form of one car Right, exactly right, exactly right. This is the, we all have the crazy neighbor who lives next door who's like, well, Honda's good and all, but I got a better idea. I'm going to beat the system. This is basically the more homemade version of the Dale. Yeah. I, I for, man, when I started writing about cars, I, I ended up researching a hyper miler story that I yeah. couldn't finish because it was just too crazy. But this is, this is totally a thing. Like there are, you know, like there's um, time speed distance rallies, there's endurance racing, there are competitions for hyper miling. Yeah. And they are all full of the absolute craziest people. And they drive was, this stuff every day. Like I was gonna say, you know, do you is the is the post awards party just wild with these people? I mean, are they all like punching each other out and getting naked in the pool and throwing TVs out the window? I don't think so. I, I yeah, I don't know. I they're probably comparing uh, slide rules or something. I don't know. Uh, totally a weird automotive yeah. subculture, and we are a weird uh, auto sub. Yeah, automotive no, subculture. I mean that is the voice of experience. That is yeah. definitely the voice of experience. I mean, at least these people are trying to accomplish something, you know, admirable. What are yeah. we doing? We're just going around in circles. Yeah, we're just uh, making fun of them. We're, yeah. we're being bullies and assholes, basically. Uh, and we tried so hard not to grow up into these people. It's oh, true. well. Yeah, what are you going to do? Oh, speaking of. So this is a Humber, I don't know, a Hawk? Says a Hawk. Sure. I guess, I guess that's the big, luxurious Humber. You know, when you graduated from the Super Snipe. I feel like the Super Snipe was the top tier, but I might be wrong. Yeah, maybe that's why they called it the Super Snipe. Well, yeah. sadly, I mean, this is a Lemons car spotting in which we are really showing our ignorance. Uh, yeah. Because we should know the hierarchy of Umber brands. Who doesn't? You know, frankly, I'm proud that I didn't think it was a checker. That, that's all I can say. I'm going to hold my head up high and say, oh, yeah, that's a rusty-ass old 59 checker. No, it's a Humber. I got that far. So... It's funny that uh, British car design like stalled in 1952 America yeah. also. Yeah, for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. For a really long time. My theory is that they had like these warehouses upon warehouses upon warehouses of headlights. And they were just like, well, we got to use four every car from now on. Just put on four. I mean, go and get rid of these fucking things. So, yeah. yeah. I, 
totally makes sense. And when you build a car with uh, with hammers entirely, I guess compound yeah. curves and fins are pretty tough. So yeah, yeah. So just throw throw more headlines on, throw more headlights on there. And then I guess the Italians had the same problem. About ten years later, they started having exactly the same sort of problem. It's like I was looking the other day at those pictures of something, and a Maserati Mexico came up, and I'm like, you know, that's like a super cool car, right? must have cost a fortune when those were new must have cost the equivalent of like a quarter of a million dollars or something like that Four headlights and a crappy piece of chrome they couldn't make an oval headlight for that car i mean all right i'm off the subject let's move I've, on. I've never heard of that by the way the maserati mexico but oh, naming a that. car naming a car in mexico is like peak it you know it's like us naming the Chevy Monte Carlo the Monte Carlo like yeah. it, but in Europe. No, the reason they named it the Mexico is that they brought out this show car and and a bunch of orders came in and like the first two orders were the president of Mexico and some petro billionaire also from Mexico. They're like, well, gonna be big in Mexico. That's what <laughs> we're gonna call this thing. <laughs> yeah, check it out, sweet car. It's one of those really square understated 60s exotics that you look at it and you're like well that's just a oh, wait a minute something else yeah. is actually going on there <laughs> super cool all right on the subject what what do we have here this is a says eastern block but i can't it's i think you, you think it's a skoda it's either a skoda or a lot of or a lot of yeah uh which was like Lada attempting to build a modern looking car. And I should point out that, you know, this looks like 1979 concept car. I'm pretty sure it was like 1990 that this yeah. car came out. Yeah. Doesn't it look past the end caps? Everything within the nose cap just looks kind of late 70s, early 80s VW Polo. I mean, which is probably exactly what it is. Yeah. I would say that's pretty close. The big, greenhouse and the tall ass is kind of yeah. you know yeah. soviet functionality and the wheels yeah. are like straight 13 inch geo geo prism style like uh it's from that thing. period when volkswagen really was emulating soviet functionality really it's like well we paid jujaro in the mid 70s for two designs let's just keep doing let's just keep reusing that like move this a little bit like we're not going to pay that guy again let's just do it this way and then you wind up with the dasher Right, yeah. which yeah. we've never had in Lemons, by the That's way. That's true. We've never had a Dasher. God, when was the last time you saw one? I mean, it's I, enough that we've had like like Passats and stuff, but I think you're you're well acquainted enough with my background to know I've never seen a Volkswagen Dasher in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> All right, next up, oh. and 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 again, Eric, you know exactly what this is. I know it's a Fiat One something. You know exactly what this is. So this is a Fiat 126P Polski, which was the Polish built adaptation of some shitty Fiat in the 70s. <laughs> and uh, man, it, this is like, uh, this is Poland's Volkswagen Beetle, basically. These things were everywhere. I think they're rear engine, but I'm not positive about yeah, that. I mean, it looks like it because it's got a whole bunch of vents and strakes. Not that that means anything. Yeah. With these, boy, that is hella cool. Yeah. I mean, how do they, I get my hands on one of these? They, I've seen a few have been imported here. They were never sold. And Hopes and Dreams Racing is in Pennsylvania, so uh, this one is in the states somewhere. That uh, is there's really a few cool. around, and in Chicago, I bet I could find there yeah. is one somewhere. Uh, yeah. But uh, I know, like, there were prototype versions that were like these mini campers with like the camper top over the over the roof uh spectacular you know uh, so i'm looking right now i'm looking for a uh, lemons rally car uh hopefully for the detroit rally although we're having a little i'm having a little trouble buying one by remote control you find me a polski fiat done deal all right that's your lemons rally car right there there you go spoiler alert <laughs> or in those, the comments those of you you track yeah. at home yeah This might actually just be kind of a good car. Actually, huh? This is right around the corner from the office. Yeah. Mental must have shot this while he was visiting the Emeryville office because this is right under the Powell Street overpass. There you go. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 
Can't believe it's running. I'm not surprised the top's not up because that's the first thing that happens on these right. cars. Can't get the top up. But that's almost too good to really make fun of. That, on the other hand. Is that an Econo line? Yeah. 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 And again, I don't know. Is that a 62 or like a 71? I Yeah. Unchanged, basically, for that. Yeah. I'm sure the Vannon guys will jump into the comments to tell us how yeah. wrong we are. But right. uh, this is pretty. This is a pretty good design, honestly. Yeah. Like, you got to hand it to them. They were kind of doing it right at this point. Yeah, this is the, you know, it's, what what do you need to get a job done? Well, you need a box. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, you need a box, but then, you know, they kind of figure, well, what the hell? We got this big flat panel up front. Uh, you know, we'll make a little teardroppy thing. We'll yeah. put some sort of fakey, bakey grills in there. We'll put a bunch of character lines on it. You know, they didn't just phone it in. It's pretty good. Although, yeah. interesting how tiny the window is. The side yeah. window. I guess that's so it can roll down over the over the door opening. Yeah, they, they couldn't uh, have it any deeper. But yeah, you I know, if you had that, if you had that window cut down to that character line right below it, man, you'd really have something there. There's a, uh, oh yeah, totally. Um, two things about this: the face of this car is yeah. like the classic. It, it it is it is a workman going to do yeah. workman things. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, you know, this thing is, it's got the wheels on it. It, it. This is on its way to being a bitchin' custom van, I would say. Yeah, yeah. How? Hey, how's Phil's 60s custom? I think he sold the A100. Oh, did he? A couple of years ago uh, to focus on his 40-whatever uh, Plymouth, 46, 48, that he's kind of building with an Atlas engine i don't know yeah the, the the short answer is i have no idea <laughs> well i'm i'm a long way from being able to throw rocks at anybody whose car project is not running it so i was going to keep my mouth shut on this oh and i was feeling so good too and then this came along as somebody points out somehow surviving in the rust belt yeah 80s stanzas just everything from nissan in this period just so bad it's like a slightly shrunken Lumina. <laughs> that is the most incredible backhanded compliment. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, in history. Yeah. It is not a compliment, man. <laughs> it is not a compliment. It's got some little bit of camber going on there. But otherwise, I mean, looks straight as an arrow. Clean, no rust. I don't an, get it. An ex-girlfriend of mine, her aunt had one of these that I... I'm reasonably certain had a blown head gasket and you would just drive around and it just reeked like coolant, like yeah. constantly the whole car just smelled shuttered. It was basically shaking itself apart, but the damn thing wouldn't die. So I, I'll give him credit. Again, emulating general motors. Yeah. Yeah. Run yeah. poorly longer than most cars run at all. So yeah. 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 I, the thing I remember about these in particular, in addition to the, they never, they never ran right, and they were incredibly poorly assembled, and that they rusted, and that they were ugly, and that they drove poorly. The thing that I remember most of all is that the the pseudo velour wasn't even pseudo velour; it was really pseudo velvet upholstery <laughs> that they used on all these things. They would get mange in like three weeks. Your ass would just flatten it right out, <laughs> and now you'd have like this squeaky, slippery ass pad on the driver's seat. The worst. Just yeah. the worst. And that's a, you know, that 80s fake velour, fake velvet material. I, I as a kid, I remember would collect any kind of food particles. Yes. Yeah. Food particles, animal hair. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. 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 It's like magnetically attracted. I had a I had a friend, God, she bought one of these new. Well, she bought the five door stanza new. It was just such, such a terrible car. But she got the one. It had, like, the vinyl upholstery with the little buttons, you know, the little buttons sewn in. She bought it brand new. And <laughs> literally, within, like, four weeks, they had all popped off. Every time somebody got the car, like, bang, and the little button would shoot across the car and rattle around in the floor. And she was just like, well, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't need those. I don't know what to do. So that's some quality right there. Man. Fortunately, Nissan's yeah. really got its act together now. And building flawless automobiles totally yeah <laughs> all right we're back to the manta 
Oh, this is a tough one. This is really a tough one. Well, you you, you go you go with your lemons build. I, I need to digest my options here. This is this is kind of a this is a two way competition for me between the Eastern Bloc entries, and really, we would be ecstatic to see either one of them. Yeah, Wh whatever the Lada slash Skoda is. Yeah, any Lada, any Skoda, amazing. But I, so that would be. Uh the white uh that yeah thing. that that would be the one yeah i, I the, would say uh, the fiat but i think it's actually the wheelbase might be too small uh yeah i was wondering that close. yeah I, uh, I was wondering that so you're you're thinking lemons build yeah i think so I'm yeah sure that's a lot of well actually now that i'm pondering it was really for me this this is a two-way run between the uh, motorcycle converted uh, insight and the uh, Humber, but really no competition at all. Yeah. Hoopiest motorcycle converted insight by far, taking a kind of clunky, slow, but at least sophisticated and of a piece car and making it completely but terrible and not usable. So, hey, you know what I want to know? Guy put a motorcycle back in. How is he going to get out of that parking spot? You know what? You know what he probably also did to save weight? Is he probably took reverse gear out of it and probably walks it back. That, yeah. I'm I'm sure he does. Yeah, I'm sure he does. And as he's pushing out of every parking space, pushing his car back into traffic and being really delighted that there's no uphill slope, he's like, but I'm getting eight extra miles to the gallon. Screw you fools. It's all about beating the system. That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, there's your hooptiest. And where's your lemons build? Uh, uh, you're just going to have to take our word for it. It's in there somewhere. And there's your lemons bill. All right, Eric, any parting words for our uh, paying public? Hey, thanks for wasting uh, some of your time with us. We always appreciate that. And when you're out and seeing crappy cars, make sure you tag them. Lemons car spotting with a hashtag at the front. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh, hi, Cassie. <laughs>